Hello and welcome to my Plexus 2D tutorial and in this tutorial I'll show you how to analyze a earth embankment that is built on soft clay and is reinforced with geotextiles at its base. So let's get started. So you can start by starting a new project and a pop-up window will emerge and you can name the project title. For this case I'll just name it as a geotextile reinforced earth embankment and go over to the model tab here and you can see there are a lot of settings here so for the model type I'll be using plain strain which is suited for earth embankment, strip footings, retaining walls and other long structures and the main assumption for this model is that the strain in one direction is considered to be zero whereas the other direction has a non-zero value for strain. Axis symmetry is mainly used for small foundations, piles, anchors, and other concentrated loads. So it is not very useful for our case here. And the main assumption for this model is that stresses and strains are considered to be equal in all directions. So we'll just click on plain strain. And the elements, uh, we'll just use 15 noted here instead of 6. What this means is that our model will have 15 nodes at each uh, mesh subdivision instead of 6. So it's always better to have more press points rather than less. For the unit weight of water, I'll just keep it at 9.81. And in this case, I will just uh, have a finite element model that's 52.12 meters wide so I can just keep this at 0 and put this as 52.12 and y min is 0 and y max is 1 so if my width is 52.12 meters if I were to put a borehole lock at 0, 0 the borehole lock would also have a width of 52.12 meters in the sense that it will stretch from 0, 0 until this end here. Uh, and that, that, that way we can get rid of the whole idea of drawing multiple borehole logs in our pile, which is a bit ridiculous. For length, we'll just keep it at meters, force at uh, kilonewtons, and time of day is, sorry, uh, time is set to day. Cloud services doesn't have anything that uh, affects us in any way. So go back to model and just click on OK. Draw in a borehole lock. You just need to click on this button here once and hover over 0, 0 and left click. And I want to have two soil layers, so I'll just click on add twice. And we need to import some materials here. So click on materials here and select global. Usually, if you've already made a material model before, you should be able to find them here. So in this case, I have plenty of materials that I can choose from. And in another video, I'll show you how to go and create a soil material model. And then I'll import one uh, geotextile. Notice that the uh, geotextiles are under the geogrid subsection. Then I'll just click on OK. To assign a material model, all you need to do is just left click on this uh, part here and click on the drop down box and select the material that you'd like to use. In this case, I would like to have the soft clay layer at the top and the granular soil at the bottom. So for my soft clay, I would like a layer, I mean, I'd like this layer to be 10 meters. So I'll just put the bottom at minus 10. And as you can see, the top of the granular soil is automatically assigned as minus 10. And now at the bottom of this granular soil, I'll put it as minus 20. So this means that each layer has a thickness of 10 meters. Then I'll just click on OK. Now let us draw in our geotextile and our earth embankment. So we can just go to the structure tab. First, just hit escape twice to uh, escape from this create borehole log tool and 
go to structure draw in your geotextile all you need to do is go to the create structure button here and click on create geogrid and then i'll start my geogrid somewhere sorry the geotextile somewhere at 5 meters here and then somewhere at 47.12 you don't have to be very exact in placing it down you can just left click on this node here and and change the x value to 47.12 meters and then to draw in our embankment it's best to draw in the outline before you create the soil polygon so i'll just use the create line tool over here my embankment will start at 15 meters and end at approximately 37.12 meters and i'll just draw in the top part of the embankment then i'll adjust the dimensions this is 37.12 and this one i'll set to 21.06 and the height is 3.5 meters this one will be 31.06 and the height is 3.5 so at the base we have a width of 22.12 meters and at the top we have a width of 10 meters so now i will subdivide this embankment to four separate uh, embankment heights so to do that i'll just use the create line tool again and uh, hit double escape sometimes uh, the cursor doesn't show and use this create line tool again and select this edge here and bring it over to this edge here and repeat it like so so now we already subdivided this whole embankment into four separate heights and now we can import our soil material for this embankment by creating soil polygons here in the create soil polygon tool uh, sometimes the cursor doesn't show, so you can just hit escape twice. There we go. So once I've drawn in all the soil polygons, I can select all of them and assign a soil material to them. This is not right, so I'll just delete this. Create soil polygon. And there we go. Select all these polygons, you can just hold control and left click each layer. Then right click on the soil, you can set material. And I'll choose embankment fill. And for those of you who want to create a Loading on this embankment, you can do so by going to this create load button and choose create line load. Left click on this edge here and left click on this edge and hit escape twice. Now if you want to check the load that is being applied, you can just left click on this load here. Scroll down and you can see that it's set to minus 1 kPa. So in this case, I'll set it at minus 10 kPa hit enter if you don't key in the negative sign you'll have the load be applied the other way around which is not right so you want to put this minus sign at the beginning and then type up the magnitude then for the geotextile we need to go and select the material so it's going to be pet 200 s and now let us create the mesh for our model. So left click on mesh and generate mesh and medium should be fine. And generating a mesh should only take like less than a second. So let's go to the flow conditions and for our model, the embankment is a granular fill. So we can assume that this entire granular fill would be drained. So it should not have any water in it. 
So to drain this uh, embankment, we can just click on this button here. So it's always crucial to drain your embankment before you add phases. Otherwise, you have so you have your embankment analyzed with all water pressure in it. Now let us add phases to this uh, model. So you can just add by using this add phase button here. So I will use five phases, four phases for construction, and the fifth phase is to activate the surcharge loading. If you want to delete a phase, you can just use this uh, button here. So delete phase, and say yes, delete, and there you go, you can delete a phase. So I'll just use five phases. Double click on phase one, and you can see some settings here. So for this, I'll just use a consolidation analysis because I'm interested in consolidation settlement of clay. The phreatic uh, setting will be used for pore pressure and the time interval I'll just set at 14 days for each phase and I'll repeat the same thing. So all in all, our estimated time for our analysis is 70 days and click OK. So now at the stage construction phase, we can go and uh, activate the different parts of our embankment. And to do that, you just use this tool here, which is called the toggle activation tool. So for phase 0, I'm not going to activate anything because nothing is constructed yet. For phase 1, I will select the geotextile and then I'll select this first layer of the embankment over here. Phase 2, I'll select the first and second layer and the geotextile. Phase 3, I'll select the first, second, and third layer and the geotextile, and so on. And finally, phase 5 will include the surcharge loading that we've created. And before we can analyze, we need to go and select points for curves. This will help Plaxis in the analysis. So in general, you can select any point that you like. But for me, I usually like to select the toe of the embankment, the middle of the embankment, which is about here and another part of the embankment here and click on update once you're done with that then you can go and click on calculate and the analysis shouldn't take very long it should be quite fast considering the model is quite small and quite simple i would say now analysis times will really depend on the material model that you use for your analysis and it's done. So to view our results, we can just go to this view calculation results. So just click on agree and continue. And a new window will emerge with the results. So to look at the information of our, of our embankment, can just go to the deformation tab and click on total displacements click on ui and you can see that at phase 5 our embankment has the greatest amount of deformation in the middle over here and the same trend can be set for phase 4 3 and 1 So now if you want to check the deformation of your geotextile, you can just double click on the geotextile itself over here. You can see that the largest uh, value of settlement or the largest value of deformation here is 0 0.35, uh, sorry, 0 0.34 meters. So that's how you can go and view the results for your Plaxis 2D analysis. One thing to also note is that if you want to rerun your analysis, you can just click on all these buttons here. 
until they're all blue again then you can run the analysis again and another thing to note is that if you make any changes for your structure you always need to go and remesh your model before you perform the analysis so that's it for this axis tutorial video here i'll make another video on how to go and create your material models for your soil and for your geogrids and if you do like this video give it a thumbs up and if you want to watch more of my tutorial videos on civil engineering related softwares do consider subscribing to my channel that way you won't miss any new content that I've made. And as always, I hope you're staying safe. And until next time, goodbye.